Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another one of our Back to Basics. If you've ever wanted to ask for advice out on the trail or and felt a little nervous to talk to some of those riders, or if you've seen a rider that could really use a tip, but you didn't want to seem like a know-it-all interjecting your opinion in someone else's day, leave a comment down below. We would love to hear about that story. But today, we're going to be talking about brake lever positioning. One of the most common things I see people doing I don't want to use the word wrong, but uh, it could certainly be improved. And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about how to ride safer, more confidently and comfortably just by adjusting the position of your brake levers. All right guys, so as I said, one of the most common things I see that's affecting people's confidence and riding out on the trail is where their brake levers are. And I know that sounds weird, but a lot of times bike shops don't set the brake levers up uh, correctly or in the best place for the ergonomics of how brake levers work and how people's hands work. Um, so what I'm talking about specifically is when brake levers are all the way over at the grip. So here I am, a newer rider coming steep down a hill and you can see it's really hard. I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating, but it's hard to get these two fingers to feel synced up, right? Because the brake lever is moving. So as I'm squeezing both fingers simultaneously, this lever is, or this finger is pulling on the lever harder than this one be just because it's closer and it's pulling first, right? So the calibration is just not there and it doesn't give you that sensitivity, right? You really want a sensitive touch to feel the feedback of what's happening. One finger braking is what you want to do, right? It's hard to brake effectively with one finger when you're way in here on this lever arm because you don't have the maximum amount of power or leverage and the brake lever is hitting your knuckle, which is one, painful, and two, it doesn't allow you to fully compress that brake lever to get the maximum stopping power. So what I see so many people doing is braking with two fingers, that way they're not having that discomfort and they can actually get the brakes to stop. What that means is you're effectively taking this strength, right, which is a lot of grip strength. You've got three fingers and you're reducing that and you now have this extreme of a grip angle, right? I mean, that's like a claw versus grabbing something like that. You're grabbing something like this. So you don't have a strong grip on the bar and being able to modulate the brake with two fingers is a lot harder than one finger, especially when that one finger is out here on the outer edge of the lever. Um, you know, they're again, usually newer riders, so they get to a steep pitch or they're navigating a tight turn and they're grabbing this brake and trying to feather it. And in, instead all they're doing is like the, the suspension's compressing, the front end's diving. And it's just like this on off, on off of panic braking because every time they try to feather the brake, it's just they're ham fisting the thing and it's causing them to lose traction, the suspension to dive, their body weight is shifting. Um, and it, it's again, it's something that is really easy to address and will take any rider to a much better riding confidence and platform. So this is going to be a little more higher consequence section where there's holes, there's bumps. <laughs> Quite frankly, the lack of grip strength even makes me feel a little bit nervous uh, because I'm literally only gripping the bar with these two fingers. Uh, all these holes are compression robbing bumps. And if I combine these holes with an exaggerated, you know, dive of a two finger brake, it's going to open up the potential of stuffing that wheel into these holes when the bike's compressing from my braking and really just give a tendency to want to shove me forward or up and over the bars combined with a weak grip recipe for disaster. So uh, conversely, if I was only one finger gripping, I wouldn't even have enough brake power to keep me at under speed. So, uh, let's try to navigate this and show you how choppy and herky-jerky it'll look like as I'm trying to brake 
at you know what I would consider uh, intermediate or beginner riders speed. Pushing this obstacle, God, that is very terrifying. And uh, yeah, just not a lot of brake lever sensitivity. It's just kind of, you grab it or you let go, you grab it or you let go. There's not just that slight drag, which lets you scrub speed more evenly. It made me feel every one of those holes a lot more. So, uh, should we find another obstacle? So, I'm trying to one finger brake right now and it's terrifying because I can't get enough speed scrubbed. Every time I try to just slow down, I'm pulling and hitting my knuckle and it lets me brake smoother. However, I can't really slow down as much as I want because the brakes are bottoming out on my knuckles. So we're gonna head back to the van really quickly, get out a tool and move these brake levers to a position that I think is going to be a lot more comfortable, safe and confidence inspiring. Let's check it out. Open up our trusty feedback toolkit and make some adjustments on the brake setup here. Our TRPs just need a simple four millimeter Allen wrench to adjust. Now, as I said, so many people I see, brake levers are just smashed all the way to the grip. Um, if you look at where the marks are on my bars from where I normally run my brakes, they are way inboard. It's gonna have personal preference, different size hands might require, uh, you know, in or out adjustments. A lot of brake levers have a reach adjustment, uh, whether it's a toolless knob to adjust the, the lever throw, um, or you need a, a small little Allen to adjust that, but that's all something that's important. But right now we're gonna talk about how far in or out your levers are. I like to ride with my hand pretty far on the outside of this grip. And again, I like to have my finger kind of nestled in the nook of this brake lever. I feel like it, it hooks my finger in place no matter how bumpy or rough it is. I have, you know, instead of just having my, my fingers secured on one position, I have t uh, basically a cradle, right? I have more contact around that, that bend of my finger. You want your finger to be straight. You don't want it to be reaching in. You don't want it to be reaching out. So I like to put my hand right there on the grip have that lever in a spot to where my finger and hand is pretty straight as I'm pulling, right? I don't wanna be pulling that way. I don't wanna be pulling that way. I want that lever to come straight towards me in a very ergonomic and natural position. So once I feel like I'm pretty close to being in that position, um, I will sort of snug the lever up a little bit just so it kind of stays in position. I'll kind of take my hands off, reset, get back down. Okay, that feels like it's a little too far inside and maybe a little too high. I'll wiggle it so that way it stays in place, but I can still make micro adjustments. You look like a twidgeting fool when you're trying to do this, but it's important to get that just right. I feel like this is a pretty good spot, um, so I'll snug it up again. Now, something to note, a lot of people really crank down their brake levers. I'm not a fan of doing that. One, there is a torque specification, especially if you've got carbon bars. Um, two, in the event that you crash your bike, you hit a tree, whatever, rock, etc., it's way better, in my opinion, to have a brake lever hit and spin rather than hit and snap the lever, or snap any other part in the brake. I would much rather have something hit and spin out of the way than brake. Um, I've seen it happen to a lot of people who really crank their brake levers down. So you want to find a spot to where it's going to stay in place, not rattle loose, not move when you, you know, yank on the bars, but when you hit something hard enough, it will spin. Now with the lever here, I'm nestled into this beautiful little nook that's created for my finger. Nice, even, smooth actuation. I can feather this lever. I can feel traction when it starts to break. I can feel the brake dragging slightly. I can feel how much I'm grabbing. It's all one finger with a very direct and straight pull throughout. So as I said, we did make a, a bar setup and cockpit setup video, which we'll go to. Um, talks about bar roll as well as brake lever position, but I like a nice straight angle here, relieves uh, any strain or pressure from bent or overreaching wrists. And what I was talking about earlier here with this lever reach, um, whether it's a toolless or tool adjuster, everyone's finger is going to be different. My personal preference, um, I don't have super long fingers and I don't like having my brake 
finger extended. Some people do. I feel like if I'm reaching, it creates more strain in here. And uh, if you think about, you know, lifting weights or pulling something, if you're pulling something at the outer end of where your body is stretched, it's more fatiguing rather than if you're lifting that weight or straining that load and it's much closer and tighter, your muscles aren't having to reach to work as far. Um, conversely, uh, you know, especially if you have SRAM breaks <laughs> with ever-changing bite points, uh, running something way far inside might not be great because halfway down the run, you could go to grab it and have no break. Um, and uh, if it's too small of a, of a gap, you kind of lose some of that, that dexterity and that sensitivity um, of the fingertip, right? When you're down here in that muscle, I think it's not quite as sensitive. So I like to find, for me, putting that brake lever kind of right in that little joint. Uh, that gives me the most sensitive, delicate feel, quick actuation, also lets me have a nice, strong grip and not fatigue the muscles. All right, so I think I've got my happy spot. You know, uh, always take a multi-tool out with you on the trail so you can make adjustments. But um, I'm probably a little over an inch and a half that I've moved these brakes in. As you can see now, when I grab this brake lever, it is not hitting my middle finger. Um, I can very smoothly and evenly apply pressure, let it go. I can squeeze that brake hard all the way to a lock. I've got clearance, I'm not hitting my finger. Um, this is honestly going to be probably one of the biggest things that is going to change your confidence in how you can ride terrain that makes you nervous, whether that's a sandy loose corner, steep shoots, little rocky bumpy areas, and I know you might not believe me, um, and I might be exaggerating it uh, a little bit, but I will tell you what, if you have confidence in your riding position, you feel like when you're on the bike and you're in that position, you feel strong. You feel like you have a good solid grip, right? You've got three fingers locked in here instead of two. Um, that when you do break, that when you need to break, it's not shifting all of your body weight and su your suspension's compressing. That's gonna do wonders for your confidence. And when your confidence is high, you're gonna ride better. So uh, again, this is something I see so many people struggling with out on the trails. And I really hope that this simple and easy adjustment helps you guys out on the trails. Um, please share this video with anyone you think could use help. Once again, please offer help, ask questions out on the trail if you see people that could use it or might be able to help you out. Uh, we're all out there trying to have a good time and get better as riders. So thank you very much for watching you guys. Make sure you check all your bolts after you're done. Check everything's tight. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys again in the next video. Thanks for watching.